and things outdoors. Take a look at what's going on in Boston and the Weather Channel's Jim Cantore is kind enough to join us again to take a look at what's been happening in the city. It has been a wild day in Boston and Jim, we haven't seen one like this in years here in downtown. Well, we sure haven't. Uh, this one's going down in the record books, I think, uh, Eric, by the time all is said and done. Uh, you know, it's just a whiteout down here. You mentioned how we're kind of ebbing and flowing in and out of the more intense snow, but still the damage has been done, you know, with, with Logan coming in at 14.5 now. All we got to do is, you know, clear 20 and uh, top five uh, in terms of a daily snowfall here, as you know and have been talking about. Uh, it's, I, I think the weirdest thing is just not to see anybody out here on a Saturday. I mean, when's, when's the last time that happened, right? Uh, but today is obviously a good way to stay home and a good reason to stay home. This is really reminiscent of 2015. Just a light, airy, airy snow that's blowing and drifting around. The difference is uh, we're probably not going to get 70 inches in four weeks. So there's room to put this. And I think that's going to help certainly with the cleanup effort and the fact that we had 900 pieces of equipment out here uh, for about 850 miles worth of city roads. That always gets it done. And these guys have not stopped. It has been nonstop with the plows. And, you know, just the fact that we can see, yeah, the wind is helping, you know, Get us the bare ground, uh, but the, the, they, they've just been nonstop in terms of getting up and down uh, these roads here. You look up state. We get a little bit more visibility now. Certainly, you can make out the definition uh, of the building. But what else do you see? A plow. There hasn't been one shot that I've done today that has not been a plow in the vicinity, or I haven't heard a plow drop. So they have been absolutely on it, all over it. So let's just say we have 14, 15 inches in the city. How do you find that? I mean, I walk out here. You go from nothing to a little bit of a drift that's just under knee high. All right, Eric? So yeah, this is more like it. You think, oh wow, we, this is in 14, this is more like uh, 18 inches here. But then you walk down again into another shallow part where it's only about six inches high. Yeah, but it's deep out here in the city. So right many of now. our viewers have been asking deep, the same buddy. question. You know, they're saying, how do I measure this? Because like what you're showing there, you go in and out of these drifts. It's such a powdery snowfall. You know, we take a look at the record books and it might be up there, but it's almost impossible to get an accurate number with the way this is blowing around. Yeah, and, and especially, you know, the farther we go toward the water and the, the less, uh, you know, anything to block, any, you know, the, the wind, that, that's exactly going to be the case. So uh, you take an average measurement. As you know, you go around three different spots that are less wind blown, and you hope you come up with something. But certainly from what we've seen from a radar perspective and certainly comparing it with other totals, you know, now that we're up here uh, closing in on two feet, uh, we're not done. Uh, as you know, we still have several more hours of this. Do yourselves a favor, do your city a favor, stay off the roads, and uh, we'll be back in business by the time we roll into Monday, I think for most areas. Yeah. Uh, Jim, you know how it goes. You know, we get these storms where we get over two feet of snowfall, and there's some people who are probably watching who are thinking, you know what? Maybe I want to be a meteorologist someday. Maybe some kids are tuning in. They said, hey, there's that Jim Cantori guy, and he covers point. all these big storms. And we know that these types of storms create more meteorologists as they watch it happen. Where does this one kind of stand for you? And do you have a memorable storm, one of the ones that really sticks out to you that made you want to be a meteorologist? This got me thinking today watching this. That, that, that's a great point, Eric. We, we, we do see that. This is the, kind of the birthing of, uh, of meteorological careers for, for young people. And uh, the blizzard of 78 was mine. No question about it. I was in Vermont. It was a big winter. We already had snow on the ground. And as a 14-year-old as a kid, I'm looking at piles of snow, all right, that like down the road that are like... 20 feet high. <laughs> so I just thought, oh my gosh, I'm in, I'm in snow tunnels here. I just thought that was so cool. And from that point on, I could never sleep at night when there was a forecast for snow. And if you remember Bruce Schwegler, he always had some pretty big snowfall forecasts. Yeah, he liked to get into the storms, no question about that. And a lot of people remember Bruce here That's on right. WVZ. It's uh, usually the snowstorms in New England. We always say that the Northeast breeds more meteorologists than any other area of the country because of days like today. Yeah. It is. This is, uh, this is. this is absolutely one of those days. Even people walking around, people came up here from Florida. I met a couple that came up from Tampa, Florida just for the storm. Another couple from southern Mississippi just to experience a storm like this. So, you know, that's the beauty of this. When you, we, we do all these weather events. Some of them are tornadic. Some of them are floods. Some of them are hurricanes, and they're horrible. They ruin people's lives forever. But typically, typically in a situation like this, where we don't have big, big storm surge and, and, and big loss of life, it, it's pleasant. I think it's a pleasant experience for most. Unless, of course, you're one of those 100,000 that are without power right now. That's not too pleasant.
Yeah, there are always two sides of the coin there for sure, but uh, the winter storms tend to provide always. a little bit more levity compared to some of those other events like you mentioned, the tornadoes, the hurricanes, things of that nature. And I know I talked to a couple of people, uh, one of our friends, a uh, meteorologist down in South Carolina, Ed Petrosky, is uh, visiting as well. He did a kind of a work swap. He said, hey, I want to go up to Boston and cover a snowstorm. I haven't experienced a blizzard before. So throughout the community of meteorologists as well, yes. there's people coming in from other parts of the country who just want to experience. I don't know how many of our viewers share that same feeling today, but I bet at least a few do. <laughs> I think after 2015, people didn't want to see another snowflake, but it's been a minute as we talked about, Eric, so maybe everybody's ready again to embrace uh, the winter and the snow. As they say, lean into the season, lean into winter. we got to do that on a day like today. Jim Cantori from the Weather Channel. Absolutely. Jim, appreciate the time. It's great to see you, buddy, and uh, keep up the great reporting down there in Boston. It's quite the scene. Always a pleasure, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> all right. So that's Jim from the Weather Channel, the Can Man, checking out the sites of Boston. We all know that when there's a big storm brewing, you take a look at uh, where Jim might be heading, and you know that's going to be one of the bullseyes. And today, Boston, the bullseye. As forecast, you know, we get to Eastern Mass, that band. Some towns going over two feet, maybe three feet, before the day is done in a couple of spots. Elisa and David, it's a pretty memorable storm. 